everything at once. It takes every possible way um, to get from one place to another, all at the same time. And, and we could demonstrate that with a, with a uh, wonderful experiment that actually was first performed by someone who was both a doctor and a physicist, Thomas Young, and who also, it's amazing what they did then, he also was one of the people that was essential in decoding the hieroglyphics. But, but uh, an, uh, an electron, when you send it out, will, and there are two slits, will go through both at the same time and interfere with itself when it comes out the other end and, and therefore produce a very strange pattern on the other side of the slits. Now, if you say, well, look, this is ridiculous. The electron either went through one slit or the other. So I'll watch it. And you turn on a light or an electron detector, and you watch it. And indeed, the electron does, each electron goes through one slit or the other. And you say, aha. But then you look behind the slit, and when you're watching it, the pattern is different. Having watched it, having measured it, you change the pattern. And so you know it was doing something very different when you weren't watching it. And um, that is, that is, is very objectionable. And, and, and in fact, Einstein never, as you know, never, never came around to accepting that as, as, a, as, a, as a fact of life. And uh, it, is, it is truly one of the strange... Uh, relativity is, by, is, very, is much simpler to understand. Quantum mechanics is profoundly unnerving because of that. And it has many philosophical implications that many people are still disturbed about. And, uh, and it's an evol we're, we're trying to understand, in fact, my own field, is, uh, I, something I'm just working on, involves trying to understand if the universe is quantum mechanical, um, what, is it, what does a measurement mean? Because if you're an external observer turning a light on an electron, then you can understand that you might affect it. But if the universe as a whole is a quantum mechanical system, which it surely is if quantum mechanics governs it, then what does it mean if you're inside of it? And one of the pictures that people use to guide themselves now, which is called the many worlds interpretation, which is just ridiculous, is that every time I look out at you, I force you to be in a, in a specific configuration, just like that electron. But there's an infinite number of other universes that are existing at the same time in which, you know, one of you is up here and I'm in the audience. And they're all coexisting at the same time. And, and so every time we make an observation, this quantum wave function of the universe branches into an infinite number. And it's just, and, it, and that infinity keeps multiplying. And it's really, it's probably the only classical way to understand what's happening, but it's so ridiculous that I think if you, that most people wouldn't accept, and I'm not sure most physicists accept Well, it, you, you say it's ridiculous, but I mean, so is the alternative ridiculous. I mean, you, it's almost as though you need a ridiculous theory to understand this, this ridiculous observation. Well, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> let, 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 that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. That's actually, that's actually good. Well, if, let, you, if let, you take let, the, the Copenhagen interpretation of the, well, um, say, Schrodinger's cat, yeah. yeah. Um, um, it, it's completely ridiculous, but then so is the many worlds interpretation completely ridiculous. Um, well, that's what's great about quantum mechanics, is every interpretation is completely ridiculous, yes. I guess. Yeah. Well, but, uh, well we, we got into this by comparing it with, with Darwin's achievement, and however y you might say there's a certain foreignness about understanding Darwinism, you've got to get your mind from a time scale of seconds, minutes, years, decades, perhaps centuries, which we're quite accustomed to. You've got to, to switch to hundreds of millions of years. Well, that's difficult, but it's not difficult in the same league as, as the quantum um, difficulty. Well, well the, the, and that brings up something interesting, that we, which is that... So you mentioned quantum theory. And so we don't have people going to schools and, and, um, and demanding that, we, that bec it's, a, it's a theory after all. And, and only a theory, only and a theory. Yeah, it's only a theory only after a theory. all. But somehow, when it comes to evolutionary theory, people say, well, it's just a theory. In fact, in fact I was just telling you, about to tell you before, uh, during the stage before we came out, an amazing thing that happened. It's a wonderful thing that happened. I don't know if you're aware of the news in Florida. Every now and then something good comes out of Florida. And, and, um, <laughs> and so there was a big fight about introducing evolution in the schools. And in fact, eventually the legislature or the school board agreed to allow evolution to be, in fact, require evolution to be introduced, um, but with the statement, the scientific theory of evolution. And the people who had agreed to that, of course, were the people who liked to say, well, good, now the word theory is there, and we can make it appear to be suspect. But the great thing that just happened, and I, I'm just so thrilled with this, is that the school board said, okay, but we are also requiring it to be called the scientific theory of electromagnetism, the yeah. scientific theory of quantum mechanics, and so now, finally, it's put on the same, on the same, people can understand that when, in science, when you use the word theory, it's very different than 
than when we use it in, the, in, in common parlance. So I, it's a great success, although it was meant to be. Yeah, that, that's very good. But let's ask the question, why, why has evolution especially suffered from this? Because, I mean, is it because people think they can understand it. Jacques Monod, the great French molecular biologist, said the curious thing about natural selection is that everybody thinks he understands it. And, and, and they clearly don't. Um, but is it that because people think they understand it, and therefore their scepticism is aroused, where they don't even, they know they haven't a prayer of understanding quantum theory, so, so it doesn't, I mean, just it's off the radar, and so they don't express scepticism ab about it. I think it's more than that. I think there's an immediacy of evolution because it puts humans on the same, at some level, as, as all other animals. And, and we're going to be bound to get to this, so we might as well start now. Um, I happen to think it's, it really, evolution is a straw man. It's really, the, the attack on evolution, in this country at least, and I think largely elsewhere, is based on a fundamental fear of science. A fear that science is immoral because it doesn't explicitly mention God because God is not an explicit part of our discussions. And because God is not an explicit part of our discussions, therefore, it must be immoral. And, it has, and, and that's why all these people are not so much trying to um, uh, attack evolution per se, as to say what we want to do is in fact have a theistic understanding Im imposed upon science classes so that scientific materialism, which has led, if you look at the literature of these people, has led to all the evil things in the world, um, uh, is now turned into a moral subject. So I think that, I think it's this immediacy that the, it's the biggest slap in the face to some people. Yeah, but why wouldn't physics have that, have that same effect? No, because I think it's, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it's not so personal, which is one of the reasons why I think people are, are many people are more intimidated by physics, is, is because it's not so personal. Biology, I think it's one of the reasons biology is taught first in high schools, which I think is a huge mistake. And in fact, me and a, and a, a physicist named Leon Letter have been working to try to get physics taught first, not because we like physics better, but, uh, uh, but because the reason I, maybe one of the reasons I'm not a doctor is that, you know, I, I was taught biology and I had to memorize all this stuff. And, but in fact, of course, physics is the basis of chemistry and chemistry is the basis of biology. So if you really want to understand biology at some level, you should understand things like energetics and, yeah. and, and yes. mechanisms. And so uh, I think, but the reason biology is taught first, I think, is that many people feel because it's about things you can see and touch and, and immediate things, it's much more intuitive and much more friendly. And, but at the same time, it's much more terrifying to, in some sense, for some people, to say that humans are on exactly the same plane at, at, at some level as every other yeah. animal that's ever walked across the earth. And, and, and for, for you, and uh, you said it's a good thing that it, attack, that, it, that it attacks that belief that some people have that humans are special and different. But for those other people, they'd say that's why science is bad. It shouldn't attack that because or we are divinely inspired and we have been and God has created us in, in her image. Within biology... It's all right. That was pandering. Okay. That was pandering. It's okay. Don't, 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 don't. Within biology, uh, the order is wrong as well. Um, evolution is taught last, at least it, it is in Britain. And so many people get to the end of their biological education never having learned about evolution. That means they learn all about facts just like you did as a doctor, as when you weren't, weren't becoming a doctor. Yeah. Um, they learn all about lots and lots of facts, lists and lists of facts, and not the slightest inkling of the explanation. And the explanation has been with us.